My uh, amendment is pretty simple. It prohibits fund funding for the purchase of electric vehicles. We have a member here in Congress uh, who owns a dealership who is, is burying his electric vehicle, which doesn't work as a testament to how useless these vehicles are. DHS is proud to become the first federal agency to debut the electric vehicles for law enforcement. How does an electric vehicle help a law enforcement officer do his or her job better? How does an electric vehicle protect our nation? DHS's website says it is implementing a new approach to meet climate crisis, whatever that is, which includes reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, Ms. Speaker, this is a joke. First, we should all support sensible steps to reduce the government's greenhouse gas emissions. Electric vehicles have the potential to significantly improve federal fleet efficiency and reduce vehicle operation and maintenance costs. Prohibiting the department from buying one type of cutting edge technology just because some of my colleagues want to score political points and continue to deny the existence of climate change is shameful and impractical. Transitioning our federal fleet to electric vehicles where possible is not part of some woke agenda. It's a matter of practicality, risk mitigation, efficiency, and safety. I support these efforts, and I believe the American people support the cost savings, cleaner air, new jobs, and healthy environmental future that will come with working to achieve our climate goals. This amendment is just another partisan policy rider that gets us no closer to a final enacted bill for the department before the close of the fiscal year. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of my amendment that prohibits funds for TSA's, quote, Inclusion Action Committee. In August of 2020, TSA announced the Inclusion Action Committee, which it describes as a coalition of diverse leaders focused on measuring the current state of diversity and inclusion at the TSA. The committee was instrumental in creating a gender-neutral option for the TSA pre-check to serve non-binary non and gender non-conforming passengers and allow applicants to select their gender based on the self-attestation, regardless of the sex assigned at birth. This is flat out insanity. Where else does this work in our society? Can I go to a bank and say I'm Bill Gates and I need a $10 million loan? Can I go to any NFL team and say I'm um, a star football player and, need, and get automatically on the team? It's insanity. How does letting a confused man check a box calling himself a woman make, make our country any safer? Is this really what we should be focusing on? The committee also came out with a report of best practices to support an inclusion, diverse environment. Where is the report of the best practices to secure our, our border, which has been open for the last three and a half years? The Department of Homeland Security has utilized over 50 airports to process more than 400,000 inadmissible aliens through this administration's unlawful Cuban, Haitian, Nicaraguan, and Venezuela mass patrol programs, as well, as well as any other country. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. What purpose does the gentlewoman from Illinois seek recognition? I claim time in opposition. The gentlewoman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There is probably no agency in the department that interacts with everyday Americans, our constituents, more than the Transportation Security Administration. TSA's interaction with the traveling public is one that should reinforce TSA's commitment to the safety and security of the traveler and their experience with TSA. That is not just limited to screening baggage. It means respecting all travelers, including travelers from diverse racial and ethnic backgrounds and the LGBTQIA community. TSA's recognition of inclusivity should be celebrated, not handicapped. Whether this majority wants to accept it or not, we are a diverse nation. That's what makes us great. This amendment is simply another pointless, culture war and waste of our time. I oppose the amendment and I urge my colleagues to vote no, and I yield back. The gentlewoman yields back. The gentleman from South Carolina is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I would just say this is insanity. For those listening in the, in the balcony, uh, I'm sure they, when the, if they flew here, they had to present a valid ID and a valid verification, a valid ticket before they got on the airplane. 
Now with illegals, no, no photo ID, no verification or, or information, just a piece of paper provided by the illegal immigrant. This is a blatant mockery of the United States law. Instead of securing our transportation system, TSA is more worried about diversity and feelings. And as a side note, can I go up to the TSA agent and claim to be a pilot and get into pilot seat? No, I can't. It's insanity to even say that. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from South Carolina. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The, agreement, the amendment is agreed to.